Hello everyone! We are taking a little field trip. We are going to be doing our fireside read aloud today outdoors. It's getting nice outside and so I thought why not take our fireplace somewhere else instead of just an indoor fireplace. Let's have a little camp out one. Alright, so let's read our next chapter. We are on chapter four of the Boxcar Children's Spring Special. And this title is called Danger in Air and Space. All right. After lunch, Peter took everyone to the sea air operations section of the museum. This is fun, Benny shouted, bounding up the stairs. For the next half hour, he pretended he was commanding the air traffic control tower of a real aircraft carrier. Everything was painted battleship gray, and he played with dozens of dials and gauges. This seems so real, Amira said, her eyes wide. Later, when Peter and Amira were looking at an Amelia Earhart exhibit, Henry drew Violet, Jesse, and Benny aside. I think we need to talk tonight when we get back to Mrs. Parsons. I think I know what you're going to say. There's something funny about Amira, isn't there? Henry shrugged, shrugged. A lot of things about her just don't add up. She sure knows a lot, Benny said. But there are some things she doesn't know anything about, Jessie said. She had noticed at lunch that Amira was amazed that they could order toppings on their pizza. Maybe she's just shy, Violet said. She liked Amira and was happy that they were friends. I think it's more than that, Henry broke off suddenly when he noticed the same two men in dark sunglasses standing behind Peter and Amira. They were back. Remember, he kept seeing these two men and thinking that they were being followed everywhere they went. Can we go to the movie? Benny pleaded, interrupting Henry's thoughts. There's one starting right now. He pointed to the sign to the uh, for to fly show at the theater inside the museum. That's a great idea, Henry said, opening his wallet. Why don't you get in line and get tickets for us all? Just wave to me when you have them. As soon as Benny scampered off, Henry turned to Jesse and Violet. See those two men over there? He asked in a low voice. They've been following us. Violet stared and then gulped. You're right, she whispered. I saw them yesterday. Are you sure? Jesse looked uncertain. I'm positive. I thought it was really strange that they were wearing sunglasses inside, Henry said. And Benny saw them too. Then he told them about the black limousine. What can we do? Violet asked nervously. Henry looked over at Benny, who was holding a handful of tickets in the air. A sold-out sign flashed over the ticket window, and Henry grinned. I think we can lose them, he said, at least for 45 minutes. Moments later, the Aldens were settled in the darkened theater with Peter and Myra. This was a great idea, Jesse whispered to Violet. I know. Now that they were finally settled, Violet relaxed a little. The men in sunglasses had tried to follow them into the theater but were turned back because they didn't have tickets. Still, would they be waiting for them outside? The movie started then, and Violet was on the edge of her seat, caught up in the excitement of the show. When the film ended, Benny felt a little dizzy. Now he knew how a bird felt, swooping off cliffs and plunging into deep canyons. Jesse blinked a little as they stepped back into the museum. The men in dark glasses were nowhere in sight. Peter had to go to class, and they spent the rest of the afternoon looking at hang gliders and the Charles Lind Lindbergh exhibit. Don't forget to pick up your film, Violet, Jessie reminded her. Peter had offered to drop off her film to be developed on his way to class. Let's do it on the way back to Mrs. Parsons. I can't wait to see how they come out. The lobby was quiet when they trooped into the Parsons later that day, but a radio was playing softly in the kitchen. Is that you, Amara? Mrs. Parsons called. I have a message for you. Oh, please excuse me, Amira said to the Aldens, heading toward the kitchen. Let's go upstairs, Henry suggested. This would be a good chance to talk. The four Aldens went into Henry and Benny's room, and Henry shut the door. Let's have a look at those pictures, he said. Violet opened the envelope and flipped quickly through the pictures. Then she stopped just as we thought. Everyone turned to look, and she held up the picture she'd taken in the museum cafeteria. What's wrong with it? Jesse asked, puzzled. Then he gasped. 
At the edge of the picture, she recognized two figures at the nearby table. You think, guess who those two men were? Yeah, the people who they think of them following them, right? The men in sunglasses. We've got to get to the bottom of this, Henry said. They must have been watching us all day. Please don't say anything to him, Myra, yet, Violet pleaded. You know how timid she is. This would just upset her. We have to settle this sometime, Henry said grimly. A light tap at the door made everyone jump. Is it okay to come in? And Myra said. Violet exchanged a look with Henry, and he took a deep breath. Maybe his sister was right. Maybe they shouldn't say anything to Amira right now. Sure, Amira, he said, opening the door. He carefully slipped the cafeteria picture in his pocket. Later that evening, Mrs. Wentworth came into the dining room in a terrible mood. I have an announcement to make, she said loudly. Everyone stopped talking and looked at her. She put her hand to her throat. My brooch is missing, she said dramatically. I'm so sorry, Mrs. Parsons began, but Mrs. Wentworth cut her off. I don't care about how sorry you are, she said angrily. I want my brooch back. It's been in my family for years, and it means a lot to me. It's not expensive, but it belonged to my grandmother. I'll never find another like it. I'll help you look for it, Mrs. Parsons, Violet said when Mrs. Wentworth left the dining room. She quickly began clearing the dinner dishes away with Benny's help. We'll all pitch in, Jessie offered. As soon as the kitchen was clean, the Aldens began a thorough search in the hallway living room and dining room. Nothing turned up. Even when Amira turned over all the sofa cushions and Benny crawled under the furniture. I just can't understand it, Mrs. Parsons said, settling into a wing chair by the window. I've never had a bit of trouble with thefts, and now something seems to be missing every day. When did it start, Henry asked. Mrs. Parsons thought for a moment. About a year ago, I guess, but it's always been a little things so I don't think much about it. A few dollars here and there, a roll of stamps, and now this. She cupped her chin in her hands, and her voice trailed off. Don't worry, Mrs. Parsons, Jessie said soothingly. We're going to help you find that brooch. She glanced at Amira and the others, all five of us. And that, already, boys and girls, is the end of our chapter. The next chapter is called A Trip to the Money Factory. Ooh, that's a good one. All right. Until next time, I'll see you guys later. Hope you enjoy. Bye.